So we're well in our uh, year of St. Joseph, the observance of this year with the Universal Church and then the diocese. So, so many great things are happening throughout the diocese, uh, bus pilgrimages and visits to the churches dedicated to St. Joseph and uh, the consecration. I think many people are doing the 33-day consecration now. And then, of course, uh, leading up to this wonderful feast day, the solemnity of St. Joseph, husband of Mary. And on this uh, feast day, it happens on a Friday. So uh, in the Lenten season, it, uh, it can be a day of, uh, you know, you can, uh, uh, you know, take off on your fasting and, and your Lenten penances and have a day of celebration and, and uh, rejoicing in this wonderful feast day. Um, on this day, of course, we're focusing on Joseph as the husband of Mary. And so I'd like to just say a word or two to those who have embraced that vocation to be husbands. Uh, Joseph loved Mary with the great tenderness and, and uh, great fidelity, and he took care of her. He welcomed her into his home and provided for her. And so we want to just, um, you know, give a, you know, a, a word of gratitude and, and encouragement to all the, the, the men in the diocese who are husbands and to ask that they consider Joseph as their model uh, in living out that covenant, uh, that partnership with their, with their wives and, and to, to have that bond, that wonderful bond of faith and, and tender love and, 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 and joyful living together and, and, and also uh, taking on the, the many responsibilities of marriage and, and family life uh, together, which is how it was meant to be. So to all the husbands out there, uh, you know, thank you for your witness. Thank you for, for the way that you are uh, living out that vocation with, with great fidelity and obedience and, and with great commitment and, and loyalty to your wives in, in imitation of St. Joseph, the husband of Mary. Sure, Lent as well, we're about half through Lent. So it's, uh, it's that time, I think, where all of us, where we might need a little bit of encouragement to, to push through to the end or maybe just to renew our Lenten commitments uh, to live a, a more, to have more prayer and penance and, and almsgiving, which is which are the three disciplines of Lent. Um, you know, to if we, you know, maybe haven't yet taken an opportunity to to receive the the sacrament of penance, that would be a good time to do that uh, as we get closer and closer to Holy Week here in a couple of weeks. Um, but just. Uh, uh, dust off our Lenten uh, renewal and uh, enthusiasm as we had on Ash Wednesday uh, just three weeks ago and to uh, to renew that and to let's finish strong as we used to say when we were training for marathons finish strong uh, and that's what we want to do for Lent so I pray that the remainder of Lent will be a time for our people to be uh, to be really united in prayer and and to uh, to use these days well. So almost everybody knows now, a week ago today, we received the incredible news, the answer to our prayers that the mortal remains of Father Emil Capen had been identified in a grave in, uh, in Hawaii. And uh, the family was notified, we were notified after that. Uh, and um, we just could not have been more pleased uh, to receive this, this, this news. Um, as I said, I think there was always a remote possibility uh, to receive, to having his mortal remains identified and, and God willing returned. But we didn't know how soon or if that was even going to happen. But it is, it is happening. And so the son of this diocese, a priest of this diocese who left to go serve in the military, uh, you know, who died in the uh, concentration uh, POW camps uh, 70 years ago this year, is finally his body will be returned uh, to, to, to its home, to, to the place where he uh, lived and where he, his vocation was nurtured. And this diocese, what he, as he gave his life to, to the service of the church and this diocese as a diocesan priest. I join in rejoicing with the family, uh, the, the Capon family, who uh, have, must be just thrilled to have uh, one of their family members return home and to have closure in, in, in a certain sense from from that and because of that. And I, I know I can speak for our priests and we're so grateful to, to finally have our brother uh, uh, eventually back with us, uh, buried in this diocese where, 
where he rightfully belongs. So um, I believe it will great, add great impetus and, and enthusiasm to his cause for beatification and, and, and canonization, which we hope will proceed now uh, steadily toward that, toward that goal. You're all in my prayers as we continue our Lenten journey, and I ask your prayers uh, in, in return. So God bless you all.